here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to try to do is first share my screen a little quick. So that way everyone can see my screen now. Okay. It's actually about the um, Blackboard online. And what I'm trying to show you is actually the case study part, right? So case study one, hopefully, okay, everyone can see this, okay? Um, case study one really is about um, the delivery methods as well as the um, procurement methods. Um, some of the stuff we actually put into the case study one when we actually designed this case study one is trying to ask you to think consider the options that are available to our, you know, uh, owners and uh, uh, architects, engineers, and the contractors when, how, in terms of how they can participate in the project, okay? So this will really, based upon your uh, learning so far in learning module one, right? The fundamentals of project delivery, okay? This is a project delivery class, basically. And we focus on, you know, design build, however, okay? But the first module is a fundamentals, okay? So introduce all different kinds of project delivery methods. So should I give you an overview about, you know, what do you mean by project delivery methods and how you differentiate between different project delivery methods and what each project delivery method has, kind of feature do they have, right? And more importantly for us as, as you know, a professional working in the industry, when you try and help you company win job, uh, what kind of criteria do you use to evaluate between different delivery methods and how do you choose to participate in certain project delivery methods? Do you necessarily have the competence, right, as a company? Can you compete in certain projects because of the way they deliver the project as well? From the owner's perspective, right, owner would always want to select, select somebody that he can trust and can do the job, you know, well and deliver the job on time within budget, okay? Those are the different considerations behind the project delivery method. So now let's take a look at exactly what we are looking for, case study one. Um, you have three options. I just wanted to clarify on that, okay? So you have case study one and case study three and case study five and six. The reason being five and six are together is because five and six tend to be shorter than um, case study one and three, right? So if you choose, you can choose any one of them. Remember, it's, you only need to do one of those three options, okay? You don't have to do them all. Right. If you choose one, okay, you just gonna focus on one. If you choose three, fine. If you choose five and six, that's okay as well. So it's up to you, right? How you want to, uh, which one do you want to choose to work on? Now, let's just use case study number one as example, right? So this is a case study. When we talk about case study, what do we mean by case study? I believe a lot of you actually have already seen case studies before. A case study is really one of the problems that has been documented okay, and has been analyzed in a way that can, you know, inspire learning, and it might be a lesson learned, okay, something really bad happened, and the people trying to learn a lesson from that, it could be a best practice, which meaning, well, this great project, people do it this way, and think it's very successful, and I'd rather to share with, um, you know, my colleagues, or actually the professionals in, in the uh, community, okay, so either way, but case study is supposed to inspire learning. And it's based upon true facts, right? It's a case study. That means it's true. It's a realistic project, okay? It happened before, and um, it's a real uh, deal. So case study one, okay? What the, uh, it's asking for is actually, you have this Metropolitan okay, Transit Authority project. Uh, mm -hmm. The paragraph itself describes, describes what this case is about, okay? What happened there? And uh, what exactly, you know, um, was the thinking process? They tell you the background of the project, give you a description, and give the project drivers. So you might ask, okay, so we read this case study, and uh, then what, right? Okay, so you, of course you have assignments there, right? You have assignments here, and you have this big sheets all about writing and analysis, but actually you have this little selection matrix. This is where we're gonna spend some time to explain to you what do I mean exactly by the selection matrix? So this is one of the methods we actually learned about from the um, you know, slides, how we evaluate between different um, delivery methods. What kind of methodology do we have available for us to make that choice, okay? So I, my recommendation will be, okay, start reading the case itself and make notes, okay? Make notes, okay? Um, how do you make notes? I'll give you an example right away, okay? But now, carry those questions 
in terms of the assignment, okay, the assistant general manager expects you to provide a recommendation on the most appropriate project delivery approach, contract methodology, and procurement methodology for this garage program, right? So that's the goal. That's what you want to accomplish. With those questions in your mind, what you are trying to do is basically go through the case and make notes and be able to answer those questions and put your thinking process here, right? So starting by reading the case itself, reading the assignment itself, then I would recommend you, instead of going to um, page two, I would recommend you jump to page three and uh, trying to give yourself a more clear thoughts in terms of what criteria do you think is important, okay, in, 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 uh, in order to make that evaluation, right? Okay, so that's, that's the thinking process. Now, how exactly you would document this process is really up to you, okay? I want something that is clear and somehow to show me the process, not just, not just simply give me an answer. You will do this and that and that's it. I want you to describe a little bit, okay? What did you think, okay? How do you actually came up with this conclusion? So for that purpose, I'm gonna show you one example um, my previous students did. So this is actually um, the notes, okay, that students made, as you see there, right? It's very comprehensive, okay? Um, she used different color to mark up the document itself and made notes there, okay? Um, one of the things you probably graduate, you know, um, realize is when you think about choosing a specific project delivery procurement methods as well as you know um, contract methods it really depends on the feature of the project right and also it depends who is the owner what kind of other peripheral or actually other parameters are available for you to evaluate against so what when you actually read the, um, sentences in the documentation saying, say, hey, um, I see the 10 garages and three years of the program and then possibly five additional garages will be made. And then you know that MTA is ex experiencing political pressure to meet a growing demand and liability, you know, have to try new process, all, all different kinds of keywords. It will tell you pretty much the background that you will need to understand. Okay, so what type of project is this? Okay, it's public or private, right? So who is the owner and how experienced are the owners, right? And, uh, you know, what kind of constraints does the project have? For instance, do they have a budget constraint? Do they have actually, you know, uh, a time constraint? Or maybe the market they are in is really short of labor, okay? Those type of things, right? When you actually read the case, those questions should pop up in your mind. Those are questions you need to carry and need to make notes and need to be put into the thinking process, okay? So this is a, this um, notes part. Now, how about the writing part, right? This is actually the writing part. I'm not super long. I'm not actually, not actually expecting everyone like write a super long essay, not really. I want something that is quite clear and uh, you know, well logic, okay, have a pretty logical reasoning process, right? And trying to describe your, you know, your selection process and trying to come up with some conclusions. So you will say, you know, based upon the features, um, based on the notes you made, um, we came to this conclusion based upon those observations, et cetera, right? You, so you'll write down your notes, your observation, and uh, write a couple of sentences in terms of how you actually analyze the situation and how you actually, in relation to the matrix table we're gonna show you in just a minute, and you come to those conclusions. That'll be sufficient, okay? I'm not expecting everyone write me a super long essay, okay? Um, now, the matrix itself, right? So this is the matrix. Uh, that's actually not the one, let me, that's the one. Okay, so this is the matrix, okay? Um, it's fairly clear, okay? The matrix itself is the key piece of the whole, this whole evaluation process. So if you have read the um, slides, you already understand what is the selection matrix method. But what I'm trying to re-emphasize is how do you actually use this matrix here, okay? When you start doing this work, how do I exactly come up with this matrix? A couple of things, okay? So the first column really is supposed to be criteria column. To make your life a whole lot easier, I create a little um, table that is maybe easier to understand. So this is my table here, okay? As you see here, 
I have this little Google Sheets table, and uh, I have those selection criteria. So when I say selection criteria, what I mean by that is, as you read through this whole case itself, um, there are certain things that really strikes out, such as time constraints, budget constraints, public or political pressure, inexperience of the owner, those type of things. Because those are the constraints or factors you have to take into account when you actually make the evaluation, okay? So I will say, hey, um, I wanna say, I put there time <clears throat> or schedule, okay? That's one of the, my criteria, and I say cost, budget, okay? And um, political, pressure and uh, <clears throat> um, financing probably I'm not sure exactly what it is at this moment but just dragging down you know just kind of jot down some uh, possible notes here and uh, owner feature okay so why am I doing this I'm mean, use this as my selection criteria then the next step will be how do you weigh between those different criteria there are certain criteria that you know, is more important um, than other criteria. For instance, obviously in this case, the budget is definitely important. The time may be okay. The public the political pressure is definitely important. And the finance is important as well, right? So you will assign a value, okay, in terms of a weighting factor to those criteria. When you assign this factor, the number one rule is the value of those weighting factor all I have to add up to 100, because all together is 100%, right? So you would say, hey, time schedule may be 20, okay? I know my cost budget is really important, I add about 35-ish, okay? Say public political pressure, maybe 15, okay? So that already give you how much? You know, 60%, right? So then you still have 20%, I say 20, okay, 20. That's just an example. You know, you don't have to follow my criteria selection. You choose your own criteria based upon your understanding after you read the case. So then you realize, okay, that'll give you, okay, that's a little bit too much. I just say 10% probably here. And I'll give you 100%. So remember, that total weighting factor should add up to 100%, okay? Okay, so that's the first criteria, okay? All right, so now, after I select my criteria and my assign my weighting factor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the different options available to me, right? As we see from the project delivery methods, we have a couple of different options there. The most traditional one is design, bid, build. You also have the multiple prime. You also have the design, you also have the design build. You have the construction management at risk. And I remember in the discussion, I'm not sure if it's, um, Davey or actually Dylan uh, mentioned about IPD, integrated project delivery, right? That's also an option. That's fine, you can add that one, um, no problem. But as long as you are evaluating a couple of different options, you're okay, okay? I would recommend at least evaluate three or four options there. So for each option, how are you gonna work on this thing, right? So you will say, okay, um, when I see, okay, in order to deal with this particular factor, um, this is the best way to deal with it. Then you will give a high rating to that particular um, project delivery methods. For instance, time schedule. We all understand design bit built, okay? It does really give you any benefits in terms of schedule because everything happens in sequence, right? You have first design, then bid, then build. So there was no way for you to accelerate the project. It doesn't really help you in terms of, you know, your overall schedule. So what you're gonna do is say, hey, I'll give you a really low rating because design bit build doesn't really help me at all, okay? It doesn't really help me at all. It's really slow. However, what you're gonna do is, how about multiplying? Does it help? Well, you say, yeah, probably, because you can beat the job out at the same time and other people actually can work together. Say, so, hey, maybe I uh, can actually have, you know, a couple guys working together and it does sell me some time in terms of schedule. So you say, hey, maybe a two. But design build, does it work? Definitely, design build is way faster than the traditional methods because you have design and build could technically happen at the same time, right? You would say, hey, that give me at least a eight or nine, maybe probably nine, right, there. You can start really, really fast, okay? How about construction management at risk? Well, 
Contract management as risk also involved the contract earlier, right? So potentially can help you speed up the project itself as well. So you say, I'll give you a seven here, okay? As I put those ratings in, and the score you get is actually the signed weight of that particular criteria multiply its rating. See that? So those 20 points, how do you get the 20 points? It's your rating of this particular methods for that particular factor, okay, but for that particular criteria, multiply its weighting factor. For instance, you get one point here for rating, you get 20 score, 20 points for the score is one multiply 20. How about multiply? You give it a two rating, right? And you multiply that by the criteria weighting factor, which is 20, you get 40 points. You give design build nine, which meaning design build is really good for you to manage your schedule. It, potentially, it could potentially help you, uh, you know, big time in the schedule side. You, so you assign nine out of 10 rating to design build and the nine multiplied by 20 of the overall weighting factor for the time schedule, you get 180 points, right? Okay, you just go on. How about cost budget? Well, design build doesn't really sell you cost much. And does design multiply and survey cars? Probably not either. How about design build? Yeah, potentially, because if you can encourage them to work together, probably good. Uh, construction management at risk, definitely gonna save your cost because construction management at a risk is function as both a construction manager as well as a general contractor. So they are actually put their own stake on the table. I'm actually at a risk. If I can save money, construction management at a risk typically comes with a bonus. Okay, so say, hey, definitely this is gonna help a lot, right? Now the same things happens, right? The rating of two, okay, multiply the weighting factor of the cost, okay, criteria, and you get the score here. So by finishing up, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna choose the one with the highest total points. You say, hey, okay, this is my number one choice, number two choice, number three choice, number four choice, and I'll recommend this particular one, right? Okay? So hopefully, this kind of explains what I'm trying to do. And look at this example. That's exactly what, what she did, right? So give your a different criteria and assign, okay, assign a different weighting factor. They have to add up to 100. Remember that, okay? Then you give a rating, okay? You give a rating in terms of how much do you think that particular project delivery method is like contributing to that, okay, to deal with that particular criteria, right? Then multiply your rating with that particular weighting factor, you get the total score there. And then you add all those scores together, you pick the highest scored delivery methods as your ideal delivery method, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's see, let me take a look, see if I actually can get everyone back on track here. Um, uh, mute on. Now, do we have any questions so far at this moment? Now you should be able to speak now. Well, overall, does it actually make any sense to you in terms of the evaluation selection matrix? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, um, does my explanation help you understand how to actually conduct the evaluation in terms of you know creating a matrix table and do the calculations? Do you, does anyone have questions in terms of the calculation itself? No, the ratings are just basically like what we assign to it, right? Right, exactly. The, the rating factor, the uh, ratings, it's all based upon your understanding. Um, we, when actually we, in, when in the industry, we actually, I worked with a group of, um, you know, professionals. When they actually worked together on this, on this particular case study, their answers are also different. You might ask why, right? They're professional. They should know it very well. So yet, why they did not come up with a one standardized answer is because they based upon this evaluation on their own experience, right? They did certain projects with certain companies and each company might have different preferences, you know, something one company says is absolutely, you know, a risk. The other company may have a lot of experience dealing with it, says, oh, that's fun for us. We have a lot of experience dealing with it, right? So that's why their answers are completely different. So don't worry about, you know, do I get the right answer? Do I get the right answer, right? 
Okay, so that doesn't really matter. What matters is actually, have you thought about each individual's, you know, each individual part of the different methods feature? Do you truly understand which part of the different methods might help in terms of schedule? Which different methods might help in terms of cost? Which might, you know, you know, influence the quality of the project, right? So that's more important. As long as you have a logical thinking process and you show me, you document the process and put it into writing and read it through, it makes sense. That's all I'm asking for, okay? That's all I'm asking for. Um, of course, the second project, uh, second thing is a little bit different. Let me show you the um, the second case here. That's actually two one, two two, and two three. Okay, this project is kind of in interesting. Um, they actually have two different kinds of um, things together, um, and uh, the evaluation process is pretty similar. The table you might need two okay options there because they do have the option for you to choose from as well. Um, so the selection matrix is only determining the um, uh, the project delivery methods. Then you might have to think about which contract methods go well, okay, with this particular project delivery method. Uh, which procurement methods actually go well with a particular uh, project delivery method as well. So, uh, so far as you finished learning module one, you should understand there are three different pieces we really care about in this whole project delivery methods fundamental class, right? First is different types of project delivery methods. Second is the procurement methods. Third is contract methods, right? You have to differentiate those different terminology here. When I say project delivery methods, I'm referring to design, build, build, design, build, CMN risk, multiplying, and a great project del del uh, delivery. When I say procurement, I'm saying, you know, competitive and non-competitive, right? And specifically, non-competitive involves negotiation, right? And a single source, okay, sole source. Competitive women have, you know, different variations. Some competitive, you know, procurement methods only involves qualification. When you choose architects and engineers, that typically is based upon qualification. Some of them really is choosing only based upon cost, such as the traditional low bidding. Who has the lowest cost wins the job, that's it, right? Some of them say, I care both cost and, uh, you know, the qualification. So I will have something such as based value, you know, selection, which is BVS, remember that? Okay, then. After you select the bid, now how do you actually make contracts with them? Which meaning, the, how does the owner pay the winner? You will say, well, I have something such as fixed price, number sum. Okay, when you actually win the job, I give you a price, you accept the price, that's it. Okay, if you spend less money, you, say, you get, you know, you can make extra efforts uh, and profits. If you spend more money, guess what? That's your own problem because this is a fixed contract. You know, you are responsible for all the money spent in the project. We also have something such as, you know, guaranteed maximum price. What does that mean? That means at some point in time, I will guarantee the owner, okay, as a, as a, as a general contractor or as a construction manager, I'll say, I will guarantee you, okay, this job will be finished no more than how much money. That's guaranteed maximum. And that's actually a variation of cost plus fee, okay? Now you may have something that is purely based upon the actual quantity of work you did. For instance, road construction, right? And environmental protection projects. You Sometimes for road construction, I really don't know how much dirt I have to, how much soil I have to remove or actually have to re, uh, excavate. But however, I know the fundamental cost for each cubic yard of dirt. If I want to remove one cubic yard of you know soil, I know how much, roughly how much it does cost. But not what I do not know at this moment is how many cubic yards do I have to remove, right? That kind of thing. So they always say, hey, unit, unit price. Unit price, give you unit price, and then we'll discuss the quantity, total quantity we need to deal with. So all different kinds of, you know, contracting methods as well. So you really have to differentiate between those different concepts, right? Project delivery methods, procurement methods, and contracting methods. As long as you understand those three, you should be all good in terms of case study one. Okay, so case study one will lay the foundation for us to further dive in the design build project delivery specifically. Because 
pro, uh, design build project delivery is the one we're going to focus on in this particular class. Okay, it's going to be a much more in depth understanding and the whole procurement process, as well as its contract methods. We're going to look at that with a much more in depth investigation. Okay, do we have any questions from you guys? In regards to the the writing part, um, what were the questions that you wanted us to answer, or can you write them down and write them down? Right. Uh, when you actually talk about the writing part, as as you see here on my screen, right, uh, this student does not really do a whole lot of writing. But what he did is actually trying to explain. Uh, I conclude we're going to use this particular particular project different methods based upon my selection matrix, based upon my analysis, based upon my notes I made. Okay, so something that you think is logical, and uh, one thing I want you guys to do probably. Uh, you know, in addition to what she did here, you might want to add a little heading. Say, hey, this paragraph I'm going to talk about specifically why I choose this project delivery method. The second paragraph, I'll explain why I choose this procurement method. The third part will say I mean, why I choose this particular contracting method. That will be, you know, way better for me to understand exactly what are you referring to for that particular paragraph of text. Okay. Any other questions? This is Wednesday, right? Yes. Well, actually, I think it's a um, tenth Friday. Friday. Yeah. So you still have a week to work on this. Um, I've been watching the discussions you guys had there. And I have to say, a lot of you actually spent quite a bit of time on the discussion. I think that's great, okay? Some of the um, formats you chose and some of the discussion you did are way, you know, it's really beyond my expectation, which is great. I really appreciate that, you know, the time you actually dedicate to the discussion. It's kind of interesting because, you know, you guys get used to texting each other and, you know, just that's the way you communicate with your peer, right, nowadays. So this discussion board seems to be kind of like old fashioned somehow because it's not that really that easy or actually not that, you know, intuitive to use. You have to actually make a post and write a bunch of text and actually post online, which is really cumbersome, right? But, you know, it does provide a cent central place for you to see how is everyone learning and how is everyone thinking about that particular issue under investigation. So if you have some time, make sure that you read your classmates, um, you know, uh, post and maybe try to respond one or two and trying to, you know, get the uh, conversation going, okay? Um, how is everyone following through those quizzes and those reading assignments and uh, the slides itself? Well, is, I, I kind of like get a feeling that the slides are very um, heavy text, right? There's a lot of text in the slides, okay? Well, unfortunately, um, that's the way the DBIA requires us to use. We cannot go, you know, or we cannot deviate from what they have provided. We have to follow their format. So, however, to compensate your efforts there, what they promise to do is, as long as you guys pass this class with 80% or better, everyone will receive three certificates for each learning module. That's a DBIA official certificate, okay? Which is good because you can post that to your resume. And guess how much money the industry will actually spend on getting those certificates? They have to spend $1,000 actually going to workshops and actually get those certificates. So to you guys, it's free, 100% free. So hopefully, that adds a little bit of motivation there, guys, okay? So when you finish this class with 80% or better, you will get your certificate at the end of the semester. Okay, sounds fair? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, any other questions, guys? Is We're all good for the case study? Is there anything due today? Uh, I, I don't think so. Okay, no? Yeah, just follow, make sure that you go back to your um, Blackboard and go to your learning module number one. You just follow those step-by-step -step instructions there. Basically, that's all the tasks I want you to look into. Okay. So as long as you follow the tasks here, you should have no you know, issues to complete these um, deadlines, whatever, okay? Okay. All right, any other questions before I 
Let your gas go. No. Nope. Okay. Well, uh, for those who actually go to Reno competition, good luck, guys. And, uh, you know, uh, be safe. And uh, like I said, uh, you guys represent Fresno State Construction Management Department, okay? Have fun and uh, just just don't have too much fun, I guess. <laughs> All right. Good luck. And I will post some notes there. And uh, probably we're going to talk again when we're actually going to get ready for our first test. Okay? All right. Take care, guys.